Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. The King James Version. And please follow me along uh, in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Please follow me along word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Check me out. Keep me accountable. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not taking anything out of context. Um, watch the video. Watch the video. Don't just uh, pick and choose. Watch the entire video, please. Psalms. The very first psalm. I read this today and it's appropriate. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Sitting in the seat of the scornful, sitting as if you're at the head of the table, seat of the scornful. Look at that verse. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Counsel of the ungodly. You're a good person. You're a good person. Ah, uh, yeah, you made some mistakes uh, in your life, but at the at the root of it, you're a good person. Mm. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And as we're going to see in this video, um, the law, the law. The law of the Lord, the law given in the Old Testament, the law of Moses, you know, the Ten Commandments, and then the ordinances and precepts that went along with that, okay? The law is good. But see, man is not good. Man is not good. And um, as we're going to see, well, as we're going to see in this video, a good person. Or, as the scripture says, a good man. Good man was always in context with someone who was keeping the law. But, let's continue. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Wind, synonymous also with the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit, okay? The ungodly are not so, but are like chaff which the wind driveth away. Those who have a sense of entitlement, that they're better than other people because I'm a good person, I do good things. Well. Well, what is the standard of your goodness? What do you measure what is good? By the world standards, you got a problem. By the standard of scripture, you also have a problem because you quickly realize that you can't measure up no matter how hard you try. Those who go about saying and trying to convince people, especially themselves, that they are good persons, or good people, if you will, um, <laughs> they're deceived. They're deceived. Because there is no such thing. But, yeah, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And the way of the righteous, Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by him. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. The way of the earth, the way of man, the way of Satan. As we determined in the previous video, which is technically a part one, that scripture categorically proves that what is good in this life, what, what is good? God, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Father. Jesus Christ, He is good. He is the ultimate source of all goodness. We also looked at the rich young ruler who say, went up to him and said, Good master, 
And then the Lord said, well, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Okay? We addressed that in the previous video about that because the rich young ruler who came to Jesus didn't recognize him, didn't see him as the I am, as their promised Mashiach. Okay? He only saw a man. Okay? He didn't have the eyes to see, ears to hear, and an understanding heart. Why? Because he was of the world. He loved the things of the world. Okay? But like I said, uh, that we covered in the previous video. Today, what is good? Okay? God is good. And what God says is good. Go to Exodus chapter 19. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 19. Now, in the previous video, we stopped it short at, uh, why, about showing where the patriarchs, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? In that dispensation of the patriarchs, which is similar to the one that we are in today, but different, okay? Very different in the fact that what their faith was in is what God was going to do. Today, it is in, it is finished, okay? I already discussed that in the previous video, but... Okay, Israel goes into Egypt for over 400 years, and then the Lord brings them out of Egypt to guide them into the Promised Land. And going into the Promised Land, they are given the law so that they, as God's chosen people in the Old Testament, the Jew is still the apple of God's eye, may be an, an, an sample onto the heathen, onto the world, by the laws that God has given them. Okay? So, Exodus chapter 19, verses 16 on verse 25. <clears throat> and this is for, uh, the chapter before the actual giving of the Ten Commandments, okay? And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long, and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, God answered him by a voice, and the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai, Sinai, excuse me, on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount. Moses went up, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also which come near to the Lord sanctify themselves. And it's going to play a part in another video here coming up. <laughs> Lest the Lord break forth upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come... And, and Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai. For thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the, the mount, and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So Moses went down unto the people and spake unto them. So the Lord sanctified, called Moses himself, him alone. Him and Aaron went up, but it was Moses himself who went up to the Lord. And the Lord did what? The Lord delivered unto him the law, which, you know, the Ten Commandments. And then the ordinances that were to go along with that, okay? And on that, we go to Exodus chapter 24, verse 12. This one verse, okay? And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone, a law, and commandments, which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. So the law came from God. The Ten Commandments that he wrote on stone, okay? The Ten Commandments, and many of you are aware of them, okay? And the ordinances and the statutes and the precepts 
uh, that would follow that were revealed within like in the book of Leviticus and, and in some in Numbers and stuff like that. But within the first five books of Moses, the Torah, okay, the giving of the law, okay, especially after Genesis, all right? All right, so the Lord is the one who gave the law, okay? The Lord is the one. Now go to Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter... Oh no, excuse me. Leviticus chapter 18. Getting ahead of myself. Excuse me. I had a really bad night last night. <laughs> but I'm still here. Praise the Lord. Leviticus chapter 18. Leviticus chapter 18. Verses 1 under verse 5. And the Lord spake unto Moses. Now this is, the law has been given. Okay? The law now, the Ten Commandments written in stone. Okay? The perfect requirements of a perfect, holy, sinless creator. Okay? The perfect commandments. The Lord gave the law to show man that he is inept. That he cannot keep God's perfect requirements perfectly. If you... Uh, offend that one you have broken them all okay but God's like okay because of the fall you want to know what is good you want to know what is right you want to know what it's going to take now for you to please me okay to get you know for you to be with me to be right with me here's the law this is what you got to do okay Leviticus chapter 18 verses 1 under verse 5 and the Lord spake unto Moses saying speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. Because remember, and this is pertinent for us today, okay? When the Lord God, our Father Jesus Christ, saves you, when you come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name, and he saves you, he takes you out of Egypt, the world, and he's guiding you on to himself, okay? So, we are taken out of the world, our past life, our lost life. And right here, after the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. Okay? Why? Because the Lord, if you come to him on his terms and he saves you, he seals you until the day of redemption. And you have God, the source of all goodness, living within you. Okay? And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. So right here we have a very clear clue, okay? So that there is a difference between the ordinances of Egypt for our instruction in righteousness, the world, and obviously the ordinances and things of our Lord, especially pertinent within the dispensation thereof, because you do have to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend, okay? There's a difference. See, the world will tell you one thing is good. They call evil good and good evil. The Lord, the Lord, the source of all goodness, knows truly what is good. We think we do because of the fall, because of Adam, and we addressed this in the previous video. We think we know what is good, but we don't. The only one who is good is God. And how does he let us know of his goodness today? Through the scriptures. Okay, let's continue. Ye shall do my judgments, and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord, live in them. Now you got to remember, this is a different dispensation. Under the law, the law has been given, okay? And within the dispensation of the law, differing from the dispensation of the patriarchs, okay, they had the written law. Okay, you, say, you might be asking, well, wasn't the law written on man's hearts? Watch the previous video, okay? Watch the whole thing, okay? If those who be against us have the time to dedicate to watching the entire thing, why can't you? Okay, come on. Come on. Seriously, no. Seriously, no. But what differs in this dispensation of the law, they have the actual written law now. And in order to be right with God... Your faith was in that God would honor you by doing what he said in the law. Okay? And we're going to see. The law is good. Yes, it is. But see, there's a problem. Us. 
<laughs> okay? Where's the problem? Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. And, and note this verse, verse 5. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall leave in, even he shall live in them. I am the Lord. He shall live in them. Okay? Now granted, faith and works during this dispensation. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, our Father, Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost was not a permanent resident in anyone. There was no sealing until the day of redemption in the Old Testament. Okay? There wasn't. Okay? That is for this dispensation, today, the time of the Gentiles, and for the 144,000 Jewish people of the, uh, the Hebrews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? So we've got to remember that. But now go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 39 and 50. Uh, 40. 39 and 40. Deuteronomy chapter 4, 39 and 40. Know therefore this day, and consider it, consider it in thine heart, that the Lord, he is God in heaven above, and upon earth beneath. There is none else. There's only one God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Thou shalt keep, therefore, his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, th command thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. Okay? Keeping of the law was works. But see, their faith in keeping the law that God would honor them for doing what he had said. Okay? Okay? Now, while in Deuteronomy, go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 16 on to verse 19. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as he tempted him in Massah. Ye shall diligent keep, diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he hath commanded thee. Like I said, in the dispensation of the law, you had to keep the law in order to be right with God. But even then, there was no eternal security. There was no permanent seal until the day of redemption. Okay? There were animal sacrifices that needed to be done, not for objects of faith, but for because the blood. All right? It's the blood. And you read in uh, Leviticus chapter 17, I believe it is, that he has given the blood to make an atonement for the soul. Okay? It's the blood. All right? And thou shalt do that which is, right here, right and good in the sight of the Lord that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to cast out all thine enemies from before thee, as the Lord has spoken. Look at, don't look at me, look at verse 18. And thou shalt do that which is right and good. How were they supposed to know what was right and good? They were given the law of God, the law of Moses, if you if you will, the Ten Commandments. And the law, the Levitical law, was how they were to go about to keep those Ten Commandments, scripturally. And what would happen if they done messed it up with the animal sacrifices and the blood atonements and stuff like that, okay? And the gift offerings and burnt offerings and stuff, and so on and so on, okay? But right there, you have it right there. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. Now, because of the fall, okay, man may, you know, because, the, because man at the tempting of Satan, not at gunpoint, disobeyed what God said. And they went and done ate, ate of the tree. And see what God said, don't eat of that tree. You got all this to choose from, don't eat that one. That was good. Because the minute man disobeyed and ate of that tree, blah, here we are today. Okay? So it is God who is good. It is God and His Word, the authorized version of the Scriptures, that is good. And the law that He gave unto the Jews, yes, was good. Absolutely. And to do, I am right here, and thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. 
what is good. God is the only one who truly knows what is good. You want to know what good is? Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. And if you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, and the spirit of truth guides you into all truth, you quickly realize that you can't be good. The only goodness that you have is of God himself. Okay? The law is good. Absolutely. And the law was given unto the children of Israel, the Hebrews, okay, in the dispensation of the law, to be a witness unto the nations. Because it says in Deuteronomy, this will be your wisdom unto all the nations. When all the nations shall say, what people is so great as this that has God so nigh to them and has all this law? Okay? So the law is good. Okay? Go to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. One verse. Verse, uh, what is that? 23. Okay? Now here we're going to see in one of, there are several appearances of this. But you got to remember, what is, who, who and what is good? God is good. He is the only one who is good. Okay, you watch the previous video in its entirety, okay? Yes, it's two hours. Boo hoo. Okay? You watch the previous video in its entirety, okay? God is the only one that is good. You'll see God's condemnation against man, okay, for thinking that we are good. Okay? God is the only one who is good. The law is good. We just saw. Okay, the law is good. God gave the law to do that which is right and good according to the law, walking according to the law. Okay? That is what is good. So when you come to this, verse 23, the steps of a good man, there it is, are ordered by, are ordered by the Lord. Okay? And he delighteth in his way. As we read in something, thank you, by the way, for giving me that this morning. Okay? As we saw in Psalm 1. That he, the, the man, the uh, godly man, delighteth in the law of the Lord. And you got to remember that was written for the dispensation pertaining under the law. Instruction and in righteousness? Absolutely. Doctrinally? Totally different thing. But a good man, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. How so? In keeping the law. Okay? All right? And let's backtrack to Psalm 18. We want verses 21 on to verse 24. Psalm 18, verses 21 on to verse 24. Okay. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Because, like I said, under the law, it was work, faith and works. Okay, yes, God's grace was there, absolutely. Or we all go up like a puff, okay? But he gave the actual literal written law, okay, for man, for the Jews, the Hebrews, to follow, to be an example unto people of God's righteousness. But see, see right here, okay? Verse 23, I was also upright before him and kept myself from mine iniquity. Verse 24, Therefore hath the Lord recompensed, that's a verb, because it's an S, me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. Very important verse right there. Why? Because what happens? Someone keeps the law, they go about to establish their own righteousness. Well, I, Lord, I'm righteous because I, I've done what you said. Okay? And God, uh, the faith was that, okay, God, I'm, I'm righteous. I've done, you know, exactly what this is saying in Psalm 18. Lord, I've done what you said in the law. I've kept it. That's my righteousness that I have kept what you said. Okay? That's a very important verse. And therein is where the egomaniacs the proudful, the prideful, excuse me, well, I'm a good person. Well, what's the standard of your goodness? I don't hurt anybody. Define hurt, okay? I don't steal. Good. Have you ever stole before? 
Yeah. I always tell the truth. Really? Have you, you've never lied before? Uh, you know, I don't want anything big for myself, so you don't covet. Hmm? Like, no, ah, oh, yeah. There are some out there who say, uh, teach that, you know, thou shalt not covet is a joke because covetousness is what, what? Fuels the economy, right? You roll that around in your head a little bit. But see, again, verse 24, Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness. What was his righteousness? And for I have kept the ways of the Lord. He kept the law. Hence, your righteousness. Okay? God's righteousness was demonstrated in honoring you for doing what he said. Okay? But there again, the biggest difference of this, the from, I mean, besides the law and faith and works, there was no seal until the day of redemption. God was not a permanent uh, residence within someone who came to him on his terms. Okay? Got to remember that. Now, go to Proverbs 2. Okay? Proverbs 2. Proverbs chapter 2. We want verses 1 on to verse 9. Okay? My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and apply thine heart to understanding, departing from evil. Okay? If thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasure, and see the her right there, uh, wisdom, like we've talked about before. Wisdom in scripture is comparable unto the beauty of a woman. Okay? That's what it's compared unto. Uh, beyond rubies and whatnot, okay? Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. See, wisdom, fear of the Lord, will bring about knowledge. Okay? Will bring about knowledge. And that knowledge will ought to lead you unto understanding departing from evil. Okay? He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. Sound wisdom. Integral, sturdy, uncorrupted. The wisdom of the world, predicated by the fear of man, given to you by Satan, is what? Earthly, sensual, and devilish. Earthly, sensual, led of your senses, devilish. Okay? He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, every good path. Look at that verse. Then shalt thou understand righteousness. Today, you read the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not, uh, thou shalt have no gods before me. Uh, uh, thou shalt not make a graven image, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not covet, and, blah, and so on and so on. Okay? The law is good. That's the perfect requirements of God. Okay? You'll understand God's righteousness when you read the law. But see, again, the problem is, dear friend, like it says in the book of James, if you offend at one point, you have offended at, at all. If you've broken one law, you've broken them all. No one could keep the law perfectly except Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in sinful flesh. Okay, he's the only one who did it. He's the only one who could keep God's perfect requirements perfectly. Okay? Okay? And you got heretics today saying that okay yeah grace through faith but you got to keep the law today to be to stay saved and be right with god that's not true that's not true that was for a different dispensation okay we're, we're going to look at that yet again okay now go to proverbs 12. <clears throat> proverbs 12. proverbs 12 verses 1 and verse 3. whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge but he that hateth reproof is brutish. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Okay? You find reproof, doctrine, correction, instruction in righteousness within scripture. Okay? 
All right? The scriptures is life unto us. Life is found within scriptures. He gives us life through the scriptures, through his word. He speaks to us, to us through his word. Okay? This encourages you, strengthens you, edifies you, tears your hide off, rips the flesh from off your backside, puts the fear of God in you, puts the abhorring of yourself within you. Okay? Verse 2. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord. But a man of wicked devices will he condemn. There it is. A good man. Okay? Context. Who loveth instruction. Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge. But he that hateth reproof is brutish. This written under the dispensation of the law. Doctrinally pertaining unto the law. The Proverbs, there's a whole bunch of instruction and righteousness for us today. And there are things that cross dispensational lines. Yes. But a good man obtaineth favor of the Lord. How do, how does, what is a good man? According to scripture. A good man who are ones whose steps are ordered by the Lord. What does that mean? Keeping the law. Okay? Keeping the law. You got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. In the time of the patriarchs, the law was not written. The law was not actually physically there. It was written in man's hearts. Yes, it was. But it wasn't actually written and given unto men until the dispensation of the law when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt and the death of the firstborn and the thing of the Passover. Okay? That was that dispensation. All right? A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. And what is the root of the righteous? The Lord himself. And what is that? A man shall not be established by wickedness, by what your own thoughts dictate to you. By you, you know, booting the door and then climbing up some other way. It doesn't work that way. Okay, one second, brethren. All right, beg your pardon about that. Now, uh, Proverbs uh, 13. Proverbs 13. So a good man is someone in Scripture who kept the law. Okay? Okay? Proverbs 13, verses 20 under verse 22. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. What is someone who is wise? Someone who has wisdom. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. Okay? But a companion of fools who say in their hearts... That there is no God. They might not pro profess that with their lips. But in their heart they say that there is no God. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Evil pursueth sinners. But to the righteous good shall be repaid. And that what? That what is that good? The favor of the Lord. Okay? <clears throat> a good man. Leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Now, according to the law, there's that whole thing about leaving an inheritance. You read about that in Zaholophad, uh, the daughters of Zaholophad, okay? If, I'm, if I have that right. But people, you know, inheritance of their families within the tribes of Israel and stuff like that, okay? That was given under the law. So a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, okay? That's something that, you know, the parents ought to lay up for the children, okay? Okay, that's something that does cross dispensational lines. You as a father, you as a mother, you ought to lay up for your children, okay? I, granted, in this times that we are living right now, that do-re-me do -re -me stuff is very scarce. Yes, but you can give to your children the ultimate, the most priceless treasure of all. Leading them on to our Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures. And, and leading and guiding your children on to God through the authorized version of the scriptures. That, that, is a, that is a treasure. That is a jewel that is beyond wealth. Beyond price. Okay? It truly is. It truly is. Okay? So a good man, because I just shut the scriptures... A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Okay? 
All right. Now, Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. Verses 12 on to verse 14. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Oh, how many people out there think they're doing the right thing, doing that what is good, living a good life. But what is their standard of goodness? What do they measure themselves according to, right? See, if see they want they don't they don't go to the scriptures. They'll go to like an NIV, a Bible. Okay, which is wishy-washy. You can find a Bible that suits your needs. And you can read a Bible that will enforce in you that you're a good person. The scriptures, the word of life, tears you apart, destroys your self-righteousness. Why do you think lost people hate the authorized version? Okay. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And the end of that mirth is heaviness. Because laughter, you know, having fun, having a good old time, right? It doesn't last. But joy, there's a difference between goodness and joy. Uh, uh, happy, 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 joy, 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 and stuff like that. Excuse me about where it said goodness, okay? Did a couple of videos on that. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways and a good man shall be satisfied from himself and again you reference uh psalm 18 on that okay go back to psalm 18 okay because see good man in context is what is the scripture calls a good man is someone who kept the law okay uh, Psalm 18 again, verses 21 under verse 24. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me, recompense verb with an S, according to my righteousness according to the cleanness of my hands and his eyesight. And again, Psalm, uh, Proverbs 14, verse 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. So what are we seeing so far? What Scripture calls a good man is in context with someone who is keeping the law. Okay? All right? All right? You with me on that? Okay, now go to Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Verses 9 on, 19 on to verse 22. And when they shall say unto you, see, like today, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, like a lot of these charismatic devils, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Because, see, you're not saved. You haven't come to the Lord on his terms. You're dead in your trespasses and sins. You can say you're a good person all day till you're chartreuse in the face. There's no such thing as a good person. What was good was the law of God. What is good is God. And under the dispensation of the law, you did what he said according to the law, that would mean you would be a good man because you did what was good and right in his sight. But you yourself were not. Why? Because the law was there to show you God's perfect requirements and at your best you couldn't keep them. Because like it says in James, again, you break one thing, one law, you have broken it all. Okay? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And in the previous video, we talk about the light of the world. 
our Lord Jesus Christ. You got to watch in the previous video, okay? And then shall they, and they shall pass through it, and they shall pass through it. Hardly be set and hungry. Why? Because they, because of why? Because there is no light in them. Because they speak not according to the law and the testimony, the law of Moses and the testimony, the written scriptures. Okay. And they shall pass through it, hardly be set and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. Now, they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness and anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. So, the Lord says here in verse 19 that you ought to be looking to the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, through the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? But what happens? Things befall them. The world, you know, with what Satan does, things happen and whatnot. So they go through this because they, they, they go about to establish their own righteousness today in this dispensation where we do not have to keep the law to be saved or be right with God. I'm going to prove that to you once again. Okay? But what happens? They go about to set, uh, to set about their own righteousness by them being a good person according to their own dictate. And they soon come up hungry. Okay? Hungry. And they fret themselves. They fret themselves. And then what do they do because of that? Because of all the things, even though they're a good person, they curse God. And what do they do? And they shall look onto the earth. Earth. Worldly. Fleshly. Carnal things. And the wisdom that is of this world is first what? Earthly. Of the earth. Sensual. Let of the senses. Devilish. Devilish. And remember, Satan was cursed to uh, crawl upon the earth and to eat dust all the days of his life, and we are dust. Okay? All right? And in Matthew chapter 23. Now here's, here's, okay, Matthew chapter 23. So, I think we have established wholeheartedly that uh, a good man was one that kept the law under the dispensation of the law where it was faith and works okay there was no eternal security under the law okay there wasn't eternal security is the lord dwelling within you that's eternal security the lord is your eternal security okay the lord is okay but matthew chapter 23 what happens, okay? Matthew chapter 23 is telling us about the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew chapter 24 is about the time of Jacob's trouble. Has nothing to do for us today doctrinally. Instruction in righteousness, yes. Doctrinally, no. It's for the Jews. Matthew chapter 23 describes the spiritual climate before the redemption of the purchased possession. And see, what happened was, God gives man something that is good. And what does man do? Man messes it up. Because man is not good. No matter how much you want to deceive yourself. Okay? What happens? The law of God is good. Yes, it is. But see, man gets a hold of it, and they add to it with all these traditions and the fear of me is kept by the precept of men okay and hence you um you uh make the word of god of none effect that you may keep your own traditions catholics and stuff like that okay man found a way found a way to pervert the law they could never truly pervert the law but what could they do Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 12. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. See, now these guys were all about, they, they had the scriptures. They were actually speaking the truth of the scriptures but they weren't doing them. Okay? And this is before the death, burial, or resurrection. The perfect sacrifice for sin had yet 
to be offered. So this was still under the law. The law was still binding until the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Until he shed that, his blood on that cross. The law was still binding until that point. Okay? So this is under the law. So Jesus is saying, he's affirming that yes, what the law says, what the scripture says is true. And what they were telling the people was true. But their example. Okay? But do not ye after their works, which they added unto the law. Hence, making the law of God of none effect, that they may keep their own traditions, adding things that were nowhere to be found within Scripture. Okay? Like how many steps one is able to take on, a, on the Shabbat. That, that is like if you take a certain amount of steps, that constitutes work. Okay? For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. Be, but be not ye called Rabbi. For one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man father upon your earth as a religious title. That's why the blasphemy and sin of the Roman Catholic Church, father so-and-so, okay? You can call your uh, biological father, father. Yes, it's talking about a religious title, okay? <clears throat> And call no man your father upon earth, for, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. See, under the law, it was your righteousness. But even if it was your righteousness, okay, it was by God's grace that he favored you for doing what he said to do, okay? The prophets, they kept the law, but they were humble, they were meek. Moses was one of the meekest, was the, the most meekest man on earth. He kept the law. He didn't rub it in, there in your face like so many people do. Like today, like Mark the Messenger who talks about you got to keep the law today. He, you, you, you corner that guy? It's like, well, I keep the law. Therefore, I'm righteous. He goes about to establish his own righteousness, which you don't have to do today. That's not the requirement for today. Go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 on to verse 37. Oh, generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? Well, we just read that they were, yeah, they were telling, they, you know, this is why there are so many heretics and lost people out there who have infiltrated, who are trying to infiltrate the church of the living God and say that they believe the scriptures. The scriptures are truth. Someone who is fake can speak scriptures. Because the scriptures are truth, even though them, they themselves are fake. That's what was happening with the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes and stuff. The scripture is truth. You speak the scripture, the scripture is true. But see, they were not keeping the law. They did it just to be seen of men. See? Okay? O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good thing, things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man still, okay, this is in, uh, in the New Testament, in the chronological books of the New Testament, but when did the New Testament begin? Read Hebrews chapter 9, okay? A good man, he's still under the law. A good man is someone who kept the law. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. And this is instruction in righteousness because someone who is self-righteous, self-preserving, -pres who's, I'm a good person, okay? While someone today who is truly saved, born again, converted, they have the Lord within them, okay? 
This is instruction in righteousness. Verse 36, But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Verse 37, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. But we're justified by faith today. Yes, we are. By grace, through faith. Yes, we are. See, verse 37 is telling you that Okay, Jesus Christ before the death, burial, and resurrection was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. Okay? And during that time, the law was still binding. So this is talking about, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Instruction in righteousness, yes. We are going to give an account for what we say. But doctrinally, salvifically, no, not today. Under the law, yes. During the kingdom of heaven, yes, because the kingdom of heaven is all works, you're going to be able to see Jesus Christ. Okay? It's all works. You don't need faith when you can see it, when you can see him. Okay? For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. In context to the law, a good man. Okay? Instruction in righteousness? Oh, yeah. Doctrinally, though. Doctrinally. Doctrine is how one is made right with God in that given dispensation. This was under the dispensation of the law, which we're not under. Okay? We're not under the law. You're lost. That's a different story. More on that in a second. Okay? All right? So, the law is good. The law is good. The law is good. But see, what happened was, Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law. How so? In the death, burial, and resurrection. By shedding his blood on the cross. Okay? To make an atonement for sins. Because it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Okay? You've got to rightly divide the word of truth. So, after the death, burial, and resurrection, our Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross... That began the New Testament with the death of the testator. That was this current dispensation. Okay? So, go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Okay? Romans chapter 5. One verse. Romans chapter 5 verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. Okay? The purpose of the law was to show you what sin was and to show you God's perfect requirement. And you at your best can never keep the law of God perfectly. Okay? And, okay, now Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Okay? Romans chapter 7, verses 7 on to verse 14. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? No. God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. And when you get right down to it, dear people, that's something that we break almost every day. We, we, we you know, to sanctify ourselves, to get, get away from things of the world, but yet, because of the stinking flesh of ours. We are given, we, we covet sometimes, don't we? Don't we? Selfish and self-centered. Uh, Self-preservation and stuff like that. Okay? But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law sin was dead. Yes. Sin taking occasion by the commandment. Okay? Some of you didn't know, some, you don't know what sin is until the Lord shows you in Scripture what sin is. Okay? And then something that you are doing that you thought makes you a good person, then you find out according to Scripture, oh wow, that's a sin. For I was a law, alive without the law once. Oh yeah, I was ignorant. I didn't know that it was wrong to do that. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. You mean what I'm doing is sin? And the commandment, which was ordained to life, 
I found to be death. I found to be death. How so? The law, the the uh, uh, the um, the commandment was to keep you from sin. Hence, to give you life. But in itself, it couldn't give life. Why? Because man couldn't keep it perfectly. But it, it was ordained to life to keep you from sin because the wages of sin is what? Death. Okay? For sin taking occasion by the commandment. There it is again. Deceived me and by it slew me. I thought I was doing what was right. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Okay? The commandment is holy, and just, and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin. But sin. That it might appear sin. Working death in me by that which is good. That's death in me in that which is good. The law was there to show you what was sin. Hence, in that it was good. Because it was God's perfect requirements. Okay? That sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Okay? For we know that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal fleshly, sold under sin. So yes, the law is good. The law is good. Okay? But what happens? Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Verses 10 on to verse 20. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. By your own dictate, you don't do what is good. Even under the law that they were under in the different dispensation, that goodness was not of themselves, but of Christ who gave them the law. Okay? They are all together. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Your condemnation. You're not a good person. And someone who is considered a good person was someone under the law. But see, we don't keep the law today to be saved and to be right with God. Our Lord fulfilled it. Fulfilled it. Okay? All right? We're not under the law today. Verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Okay? You're lost. You're under the law. How so? Because the law is there to show you that you are not a good person. That at your best, you're vanity. You've lied. Okay? You've coveted. All right? You've stolen. All right? You have set up idols in your heart. You have bowed down to other gods besides the true living God. Yourself. Okay? All right? And if you say, well, I don't murder, I don't steal, but yet you lie. Well, I don't lie. You've never lied before, huh? You've never lied before? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. Therefore, first, now look at this. Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. You read the Ten Commandments, you can't keep that perfectly if your life depended on it. And these lost people, well, I'm a good person. Why? 
What makes you good? You, uh, you, you know, do they believe on Jesus Christ? Oh, they believe in another Jesus who tells them they're a good person, that God's not angry at them, that God loves you unconditionally. That's not the God of the Scriptures. Okay? All right? Now, go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Okay? Galatians chapter 2. Galatians, not Colossians, Brad. Galatians chapter 2. Just one verse to start. Verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even as even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. Okay? For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Well, how is this? This isn't a contradiction. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay, all right. We are under this. We are in a dis different dispensation. Okay, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, with the death of the testator, brings in the New Testament, brought in this current dispensation. Okay, and in this dispensation, because the Lord fulfilled the law, we don't have to keep the law today to be saved or to be right with God. Okay, but see, you got people out there like Mark the Messenger who say that you got to keep the law today. You got to keep the commandments. You can't keep the commandments. You can't. Okay, the commandments for us today in this dispensation, unto the Jew first and also to the Greek, the Greek is a Gentile, find that in Romans chapter 13. Because under the law was the Sabbath. We don't have to keep the Sabbath today to be right with God. Even if you're a Hebrew or Jew, you don't have to keep the law, uh, the Sabbath. Should you? Yes. Do you have to uh, as pertaining to salvation? No. You don't. You don't. Okay? It's by grace through faith today. All right? Now go while we're in Galatians chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 29. Again, Paul says, Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgression, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, our Lord Jesus Christ, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one, spirit, soul, and body, okay? And he is the mediator of the New Testament, which brought up, which came in because of the death of the testator, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law which have, could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. It was ordained to life, meaning you keeping you away from sin. Okay? But see, we can't keep it. At our best, we fall short every time. Even these guys like Mark the Messenger and these uh, work salvationists like Calvinists and stuff like that. Okay? Absolutely. They're, they're keeping themselves right with God by what they do. Okay? Hence, their righteousness is what they do. It's their righteousness. Okay? Our righteousness is of God himself who dwells within us. Okay? Not by what we do. God forbid. I mean, we can hardly keep, we can hardly keep what is ordained for us today. Okay? Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. For instruction in righteousness, you want to learn how to walk as the church of the living God today? Good examples in the Old Testament. Okay, for our instruction in righteousness, not doctrine. Okay? But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. When faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. What does that mean? Lost people are still under the law because the law tells them that they are lost and that they are sinners, that they're not good. But I'm a good person, right? 
Yeah. For ye are all, those who are saved, children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Which Christ? Which Jesus? Okay. For as many as uh, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. Free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. What does that verse mean? Salvifically, pertaining to salvation. Okay. There are Jews, Hebrews today. There are Greeks, obviously. Okay. There are distinctions that way. Uh, obviously, even though uh, these devils want to try to blur this gender thing, this transgender devilish stuff, okay, there, what does this mean? There's neither male nor female in salvation. There's no distinction in salvation as before there was under the law, okay? Yes, there was. Today, there is no distinction. Because with the death, burial, and resurrection, the cross is so important. What did the cross mean? The link will be in the description box, okay? So important. By that, through the death, burial, and resurrection, uh, the blood that he shed on the cross, the death of the testator, the, te the veil of the temple was rent in twain, making of twain one new man, Jew and Gentile, okay? So in salvation, there is no difference. Culturally, yes. There's obviously, no matter what these devils want to tell you, there is a difference between a male and a female. Okay, absolutely. And ye, and if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Okay? And of course, 1 Timothy chapter 8, uh, for, <laughs> excuse me, 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Verses 8 unto verse 11. But we know that the law is good. Right there. If a man use it lawfully, which the scribes and Pharisees weren't doing at the time in Matthew chapter 23. Like so many people who say that they're, they're right with God because they're keeping the Ten Commandments. <laughs> yeah. Verse 9. Here's condemnation for you lost people. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Because by the law, have you, have you been following me along with what we've been looking at? The law is good, yes, because the law shows you how sinful you are and how inept you are to keep God's perfect standards. Okay? So hence, in the dispensation under the law where there was no eternal security, where your goodness is of God himself. Okay? Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for men slayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, sodomites, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, also according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. You're lost, you're under the law. Have you lied? Have you stolen? Have you cheated? Have you coveted? Well, so have you, Brad. Yeah, I have. And that broke me because at my best, I could never make God happy by or please him by keeping the commandments and you kept the commandments to keep yourself from that which is evil sin it was ordained unto life to keep you from evil but it brought death because you couldn't keep it perfectly okay Romans chapter 10 Romans chapter 10 Romans chapter 10 Verses 3 on to verse 10. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Anyone today like Mark the Messenger and those sad people who are deceived by him and those who do not rightly divide the word of truth, okay, 
They're going about to establish their own right. Talk to a Catholic. I'm, I went to Mass. I had the cookie. I give tithes of all I possess. I'm not like this publican. I do this. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. And, and we already looked at it. We already looked at it. In Psalm again, verse 18. Okay? We already looked at it. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law. And we read this in Leviticus, what was that? Uh, 18, verse 5. Okay? For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith, faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Like... That's exactly what someone who's doing work salvation, and I'm a good person because I am the standard of my own goodness, so you're bringing Christ down from above. Never mind what the Jesuit priest with their woody woody and their, you know, abracadabra hocus pocus with the cookie and the cup. Okay, never mind that. Okay, that's a little too obvious. Okay? Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Look at that. To bring Christ down. That is to bring Christ down from above. That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. What, are you a God? That you are the one that uh, goes up into heaven to bring Christ down to you? That raises up Christ from the dead? Who are you? You are of your father the devil. For the lust of your father you will do. For he was a murderer from the beginning. Okay, and we show that in the previous video. And he will be like the Most High. Okay? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thine heart. In thy heart, excuse me. Yes, like we said in the previous video. You don't kill your conscience. Psst, you sear it. Okay? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart. Thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for the, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is word is made unto salvation okay there are people out there who uh, said they have called on the name of the Lord and they believe they are saved but see they they skipped over Brokenness of their self-righteousness. Contrition. It's your fault. It's your fault. And fear of the Lord. And if they had the fear of the Lord, they wouldn't do a third of the things that they do today. Okay? So yes. Yes. Calling on the name of the Lord. Yes. Yes. But see, calling on the name of the Lord, skipping over, broken of your self-righteousness, Contrition, knowing and uh, you know it's your fault. You put them there, and fear of the Lord. Calling on the name of the Lord, that that's not going. That's going to affect nothing for you. You have to be broken. Okay, you have to be broken of your self righteousness, and all these self righteous people. I'm a good person. Okay, and again, verse three, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness. And going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, man. Verse 21. And this is what the self righteous, the work salvationist, the easy believism ist, if you will. Because they're saved because I just believe. They're saved by what they do. They skip over scriptural repentance. Okay? They do. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus never sinned. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Imputed righteousness. And when he saves you, he imputes what? His righteousness? Himself? Well, you might say, well, that makes me righteous. Salvifically, yes, but see, 
we we're in made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Our spirit and soul are still housed within this skin suit, and it is sin is here in flesh. Okay. Romans chapter five. Romans chapter five. Romans chapter five. Oh, Matt, what are you doing, Brad? Romans chapter five. <clears throat> Romans chapter 5 verses 1 on to verse 7 Therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God and not only so but we glory in tribulation also tribulations also knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Given unto us, excuse me. Now look at this. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one will die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. And good man appears twice. Okay, once in the Pauline epistles, which we just saw, and we're going to look at Acts chapter 11 here in a bit. But right there, a good man. Hmm, a good man. Jesus Christ, okay? And again, this is in Luke chapter 18. Go back to Luke chapter 18, verses 18 on to verse 20. Luke chapter 18, verses 18 on to verse 20. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one that is God. Again, the rich young ruler saw only a man, didn't have eyes to see that that's the, the Messiah right there. God manifest in the flesh, the Father. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and mother. The law. Okay? He brings up the law. Okay? And the blind beggar who called out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped. But yet the rich young ruler came, good master. He's like, why are you calling me good? But yet the blind guy who sat by the wayside begging, when he heard that Jesus went by, he said, Jesus, thou son of David. See, that, him saying that, was acknowledging Jesus as the son of David. Their Messiah, God the Father. Their King. Okay? So here in Romans chapter 5, yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. A good man. Do we keep the law to, to be saved and be right with God today? No, we do not. So, good man. Jesus Christ kept the law perfectly. He is also the Son of Man. Okay? He was born of a woman. Okay? Yes, he was. He's the Son of Man. Son of God. You know, born of a woman. That's what that means. Okay? As man, God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He did what we could never do. He died a good man. Why? Because Jesus kept the law perfectly. Okay? That's what that means. This does not pertain unto us. And besides, okay, uh, Luke chapter 22. Luke, uh, 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 Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, verses 31 on to verse 34. And the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Peter was not converted at this time. No, he wasn't. And he said unto him, Lord, look at this, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Most everyone will boast their own goodness, but a faithful man who can find? And he said, I tell thee, Peter, 
the cock shall not crow this day before that thou, sh that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Peter. Oh, 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 Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Talking about Peter and the truth of Scripture about Peter, this makes the Catholic angry. Uh, Mark chapter 14, verses 26 on to verse 31. And when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. He's quoting, um, quoting from Zechariah chapter 13. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. And Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all. And of course what happens? Satan wanted to sift them. Oh yeah? Okay. A woman is like, Aren't you a Galilean? And it's like, Hey, this guy is a Galilean. It's like, You were with him. I saw you there. And he began to curse and to swear to show, Hey, I'm just like you. Okay, I curse and swear. I don't know the man. And then in Luke, Luke chapter 22, the most stinging, one of the most stinging por uh, portions of Scripture, after the, uh, Peter had denied the Lord the third time, the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. I told you so. Even for a good man, peradventure, some would even dare to die. But see, Peter wasn't converted. Peter... He wanted to do that. He meant what he said there. But see, when the rubber hit the road, because Satan wanted to sift him as wheat, and Satan, who is the accuser of the brethren, it's like, okay, let's see. You, you talk a good game. Let's see what happens when your feet are put to the fire. Where, you know, where are all your good words and fair speeches then? Huh? Peter gave much, uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 33, Ezekiel chapter 33. I am not saying that Peter did anything that was evil in his heart. He was just deceived. He wasn't converted. He, he, when he said that, I'm ready to die with you. He meant it. He meant it. But when his feet were put to the fire, he crumbled just like the Lord said, because he wasn't converted. Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 31 and 32. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they do them, they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after, covet, after their covetousness. You saying Peter was covetous? When he denied the Lord, what was he coveting? His own rear end. Yeah. Like a lot of these lost people. Okay? They preach of their righteousness. But when it comes to their self-preservation, uh, self that's a, yeah, save your life at all costs. Um, deny the Lord to save, he who saves his life shall lose it, but he who loses his life for my sake, the same shall find it. Do you see? Peter was protecting his own rear end when he said, I'll die with you. I'll die for you. But his feet were put to the fire. He coveted his own rear end. Did. He wasn't converted. Why do you think he wept? The Lord said so, but he's like his own. That you talk about. That's when Peter got broken. It's like I, you know, I'm a stone. I, I'll, you know, hard-headed. Okay, and we see that in Peter. Okay, we do. All right. 
He denied the Lord when the Lord said he was going to do so. He's like, no, I'll die with you. If anyone else denies you, not yet not I. But yet he denied him the most atrociously. Verse 32. And lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And see, what I just said about Peter will infuriate the Catholic. It really will. Especially the coadjutors who work for the Vatican. That, that will infuriate them. Okay? Because their Peter is actually Jupiter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay? And unfortunately, the best place where we can prove this is Philippians chapter 2. One verse. Verse 21. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. Peter boasted greatly. But like I said, when his feet were put to the fire, he crumbled. Because he sought his own. He sought to cover his own rear end. He coveted his own life. What happens to us in this dispensation when we're called to be uh, a testimony even unto death? So, a good man, Paul was talking about, was the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, But now let's look at Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. Like it says in Peter about the word Christian, which so many people cling to. Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. Now, when we read Acts, the book of Acts, you've got to remember, that the book of Acts, that is this book current dispensation but what was happening okay before the death burial and resurrection our lord jesus christ was offering the actual physical literal kingdom of heaven with him as king sitting upon the throne he was offering that unto the jewish the hebraic people they rejected that he as according to scripture but he wouldn't be a just and fair god if he didn't offer it he goes dies and buries and wrote get, died buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture, shed his blood to make atonement for sin, fulfilling the law, okay? All right? That brings in the New Testament, this current dispensation, okay? But in order for him to be a just and righteous God, after the death of burial and resurrection and him still on earth, the kingdom of God, the spiritual, was offered unto the Jew first. Okay, that was the, it was this dispensation. Why? Because the sacrifice for, for sins was paid. It was this dispensation. But the kingdom of God was first offered on to the Jews in the book of Acts. You, you read about that in the book of Acts. That until Acts chapter 7, the gospel, the good news, was preached to only the Jews at the very beginning. In Acts chapter 2, where they spake in known languages, tongues, there were no Gentiles present. There were none. It was all to the Hebraic people, the Jews. Okay? This dispensation, saved by His grace through faith. Okay? But it was first offered unto the Jews first. After Acts chapter 7, when Jewry in a whole rejected the gospel, you read in Acts chapter 8, the gospel going on to a Gentile who just happened to be an Ethiopian, a Hamite. Okay? Because Israel, Jewry, in a whole, first rejected the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom with Jesus sitting on the throne. Then they rejected the kingdom of God, the spiritual. And then, you know, it was already this dispensation. But then they go to the Gentiles because the inevitable grafting in of us Gentiles into the tree of the Jew. Okay? So, it is a time of transition here. You have to remember, the book of Acts is a transitional book. Going from the dispensation of the law, uh, transitioning into this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, where we are saved by his grace through faith. Okay? So that, and that, let's read Acts chapter 11, Verses 31 on to verse 34. Okay? 31, excuse me. <laughs> uh, uh, Acts 21, Acts 11, verses, I'm sorry. Acts 11, verses 22 on to verse 26. 
Acts 11, verses 22 on to verse 26. Sorry about that. All right, Acts chapter 11, verses 22 on to verse 26. This is talking about Barnabas. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came, who when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man, there it is, and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christ were called, not called themselves, were called by the world, labeled by the world, Christians in Antioch. Okay? Okay? For he was a good man. There are some things we have to remember here. Okay? A good man. What have we already established? That someone who was a good man was someone who kept the law. But you, we don't have to keep the law today. Acts, right? This is a book of transition. Okay? This is only Acts 11. Okay? The Gentiles were brought in in Acts chapter 7, in Acts chapter 8. Okay? Still the time of the Gentiles. Still this dispensation. Okay? But God had to offer the kingdom of God first unto the Jew. Then they rejected that in Jewry as a whole. Rejected that. Jews, Hebrews can still be saved today. But absolutely. But then we were brought in to make them jealous. Okay? So this is a book of transition. Okay? All right? We have to remember. Go to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Okay? Romans chapter 7, verses 15 on to verse 20. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Sin. Paul sinned. He didn't want to sin. He want, he, you know what the law said. Okay? But he realized he couldn't do that at his best. Okay? For if, for if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Okay? Yeah, I, I'm i sinning. The law says thou shalt not covet. I'm coveting. The law is good. It shows me that I'm not good. Okay? Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth within me. Sin that dwelleth within him. Okay? He's not disassociating himself from his sin. From his sin. Okay? All right? He's owning it. Because, okay? For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. Hence the crux of the law. You, do, you fulfill one end of it, but yet you break one, part, uh, one, break one, you poke it all. Okay? <clears throat> For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, for the good that I would, I do not. Stop sinning. Okay? Doing what is good. What was good? The righteousness of the law. He couldn't keep it even if his life depended on it. Okay? But the evil which I would not, that do I. Sin. I can't stop sinning. The law says, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. You do that. We all do it. Even those of us saved sinners. Okay? Okay? We st I struggle with covetousness. Okay? I struggle with pride. Every day. Okay? It's not about me. But the law shows us how sinful we are. Okay? Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And there is nothing good in us. 
the goodness that we have is not us. It's that imputed righteousness. Hence, there is no such a thing as a good person. But see, the grace of God. Verse 24 and 25. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Serve the law of God, being uh, knowing that, okay, these are God's perfect requirements, but I also know that I can't keep them. That's why we thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That even though we can't keep them, and we're, it's not a requirement, because we can't. Brethren, we can't. Okay? But as far as Barnabas being referred to as a good man, it was a book of... Acts is a book of transition. And notice, that's Acts chapter 11. Okay? Notice, go back to Acts chapter 11. That's Acts chapter 11. Peter, in Acts chapter 10, went to Cornelius, the first Gentile... Uh, that was grafted in within this dispensation was an Ethiopian eunuch, a Hamite. Okay? But in, this is Acts chapter 11. Okay? So, Barnabas was called a good man because he was one that kept the law. But yet he had the Holy Ghost Okay, he didn't have to keep the law to be right with God any longer. But before, because, because you got to remember, at Acts chapter 11, Christ had not been dead yet, even, uh, or gone up to heaven, excuse me. Christ had not gone up to heaven yet, not even yet 50 years. Okay, hardly, not even a half a century had gone by. And it is a transitional book. This is Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15, verses 6 on to verse 11. Barnabas was called a good man. Why? Because he obviously kept the law. Okay? But, that was Acts chapter 11, transitioning. Acts chapter 15, the Jerusalem conference. Okay? Verses 6 on to verse 11. And the apostles and elders came forth to consider of this matter. What was that matter? Verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. What does that mean? you got to keep the law. Okay, circumcision was, was a precept of the law. So what, they are, what are they saying? you got to keep the law. Or if you don't keep the law, you aren't saved. That's exactly what Mark the Messenger preaches. That you got to keep the law to be saved. That's heresy. And the apostles and the elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? He says it right there. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So, obviously, before the death, burial, and resurrection, before this coming, like I said, this wasn't even 50 years. Barnabas was one who kept the law, but he also had the Holy Ghost, okay? And this was a time of transitioning, okay? This is only Acts 11, okay? Cornelius and the Ethiopian eunuch are the ones that are mentioned of the Gentiles, okay, that were grafted in. Okay, that was the beginning of the grafting in. It was this dispensation. See, hyper-dispensationalists like to break that up and say, well, there is one uh, church of the Jew and one of the Gent. No, it is this dispensation. It's just God was giving, offering it onto the uh, Jews first. And when they rejected, when Jewry rejected it, we were brought in. See. So, 
Barnabas was one that was, he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost. And we just read in Acts chapter 15 and we have already seen through Paul that keeping of the law today uh, to be right with God and to be saved and stay saved is not a requirement. Not that we don't have any law, okay? You read Romans chapter 13, okay? So that the scripture says that Barnabas was a good man making reference that he was one that kept the law. But uh, in Acts chapter 15, okay? Acts chapter 15 again, Verse 10, Now therefore why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? And this is something that Barnabas struggled with. And isn't it interesting that after this, that Paul and Barnabas in verses 36 on to verse 41, after they the Jerusalem conference, after they decreed this, that, hey, look, we couldn't keep the law even at our best state. Isn't it interesting that Paul and Barnabas went whoosh, their separate ways? Isn't that something? Barnabas also struggled with that. Because you read in Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Um, James. Not the brother of John, but the brother of Jesus. Okay? James. He was also one that, and I had a, there was a video that the Lord had me to do where we discussed this, and I couldn't at gunpoint tell you which one it is, okay? But I believe that James struggled with this, well, there's one for us and one for the Gentile. Prove it to you? Okay, Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 13. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, talking about Peter. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. You know, not mingling because Peter, uh, Peter himself. It's not lawful for one that is a Jew to be, uh, keep company with a Gentile. Okay? It's not lawful. Okay? So, fearing the circumcision, they what? And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him. Insomuch that... Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. So that Barnabas. But let's read verse 14. But when I saw that they walked not, uh, not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. The truth of the gospel. Okay? That, what is the truth of the gospel? The death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, the death, burial, and resurrection. The truth of the gospel is this. That in salvation, there is neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, female, barbarian nor Scythian. Okay, but we are all one in Christ Jesus. That in salvation, there is no distinction. That's the truth of the gospel. Okay. I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew, livest after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why can thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? It was something that Barnabas struggled with. And after Acts chapter 15, like I said, it's interesting. They, they conclude, it's like, yeah, we couldn't keep the law even if we tried. We are saved by grace through faith. Okay? That transition. Okay? Transitioning. And they affirmed with what Paul preached. Grace through faith. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which was already of this dispensation. But our Lord offered unto the Jew the Hebraic people, the, uh, the good news, the gospel, the kingdom of God first. But in a whole, Jewry rejected it, and hence we were brought in. And Barnabas struggled with that. Because after Acts 15, after Acts 15 you barely hear peep of Barnabas. So, so you're a good person, huh? We have already, we have uh, firmly established that a good man was someone who kept the law. And we have already also established that today, in this dispensation, you've got to rightly divide the word of truth. Um, you do not have to keep the law in order to be saved. Okay? The, the, you know, we have law today for us. We are not 
walking around lawless, going by our own dictate, okay? The gospel, okay? The instructions, the uh, truth that is given to us, especially within the Pauline epistles, especially, which is specific doctrine for us today, okay? We have laws for us today as the church of God. Okay? Yes, we do. We're not walking around nilly, willy-nilly going as we see fit. No, 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 no. But the law of righteousness, the law of Moses, we, are not, we, we don't keep that today to be right with God, to be saved. Okay? We have established that. So when someone says they're a good person, oh, you keep the Ten Commandments perfectly, huh? You keep the law, huh? Huh? People like Mark the Messenger who go to establish their own righteousness and deceive so many of you. If you were to confront that man, I, I keep the law. I am one of the chosen ones. He lies to you. He says he's a Hebrew. He's not a Hebrew. Perfect example. You're not a good person, my friend. You're not a good person. There is no such thing as a good person. The goodness that they had in the Old Testament was the law. The law was good, but they themselves were not good. Their righteousness was a self-righteousness because they did that was good to obtain favor of the Lord. Today we are saved by His grace through our faith. We don't keep the law to be saved. This, this fallacy, this illusion of goodness that people, they're a good person. There is no such thing. Beware. Come. Let us reason together, you and I. Because you're walking around, around saying that you're a good person. You're in agreement with hell. And that's where you're going. Because there is none good. No, not one. I am not good. I'm a sinner who is chief. Okay? Anything that comes of this, of me, that's good. It's not me. It's Jesus Christ who dwells within me. And someone boasting themselves, well, I'm a good person, you don't have Jesus Christ. Because Christ in you, you go around saying, I'm a good person, uh, he would rebuke you. That is going to be it for this video. YouTube and hackers and people out there are doing things to many people. YouTube has um, YouTube and their algorithm. <laughs> things are going to be a little bit different from now on here on this channel that the Lord has given me. Things are going to be different. You're going to be seeing some different things. Okay? Things are going to be different um, going forth. Um, this is all about the Lord, Jesus Christ. This is not about me. If you've come to this channel, if you were coming here before, you might have noticed on the home page that the popular uploads were one of the sections. I took that down. If, if you've come to this channel, it's because the Lord has brought you here. And if the Lord is in you, and there's something that He wants to speak to you from me, His, his servant... He'll guide you on to that video. The spirits will identify. Okay? This isn't about me. And knowing with what my best friend is going through and with what I'm going through, I don't know how much longer I have to live. With my heart issue, I don't know how much longer I have. It's not about me. It's about Jesus Christ. And when the devils attack me, trying to get me to defend myself, and to, to show, oh, see, he's, it's not going to work. Oh, and they're going to put my feet to the fire. Aren't you, buddy boy? You know, there are some of my enemies who I actually respect. There are some of them that I actually respect. Because they do things that we as the church of the living God should do. And for that, they have my respect. I do. I do respect some of our enemies because some of our enemies do certain things that we as the church of the living God ought to do, but don't. And that ought to scare us. 
Please keep us in your prayers. Please keep Brother Alexander Hartley in your prayers. He's... Let's pray for him. Please keep, uh, pray for our brother from North Dakota that the move goes slowly. Not uh, slowly, excuse me, smoothly. Please pray for the brethren in Oregon. Please pray for our brother in um, uh, uh, New Jersey. Please pray for our sisters. Pray for one another. Videos, um, I don't know if uh, this week, because I said, things are going to, changes are coming. Changes are coming, and you're going to notice them. Okay? Changes are coming. Um, I don't know if this week there will be another video. I do not know, but there are videos coming. So, thank you so much for watching this, if you do. Thank you for those of you who pray for us, who love us, and help us. We need all the help we can, we, you can give us. Any help from the Lord, we need it. We need your prayers. Thank you, brethren. We love you. And we will see you in the next video, whenever that will be.